Thanks very much for staying with us. Time now for Eye on Africa with me, Georgia Calvin Smith. Tonight, Zimbabwe's main opposition party dismisses government claims that it is trying to smuggle weapons into the country. Also, rent control means that thousands in Cairo who pay only a few euros a year for large apartments often live in crumbling buildings as landlords make a pittance, making it not worth their time to invest in upkeep. And Road to Nowhere, Cameron's long-promised Yaoundé Douala Highway remains stalled in its first phase. It's one of the most expensive projects of its kind on the continent, but it's dogged by corruption allegations. We take a closer look. But first, Zimbabwe's main opposition party, the MDC, has denied accusations from the security minister that the alliance is smuggling weapons into the country in a bid to topple the government. Minister Owen Ube's claims are so far unsupported and come amidst heightened political tensions. Top MDC officials say that the allegations could be used to justify a crackdown against its members. Ryan Truscott has more. This claim was made at a press conference by Security Minister Owen Nube, who is an ally of President Menengagwa. The minister said there are attempts to drive Zimbabwe into chaos. He said that rogue elements were conniving with Western powers, he didn't mention which ones, to smuggle weapons into the country to arm militia groups called uh, Democratic Resistance Committees. The claim did make headline news in the state media here today. The Herald newspaper, which is state-controlled, uh, published the story under the headline Plot Against Zim Exposed. This afternoon, the MDC Alliance spokesperson Fadzai Mehere uh, denied the allegations. She says that her party doesn't carry guns, it carries ideas. And she says that the party's strategy is to use non-violent, uh, radical and democratic means to win power. Uh, President Minangagwa's government is under huge pressure at the moment, both internally and externally. It's been criticised at home and abroad over the arrest of high-profile opposition figures and government critics in recent weeks, people like the journalist Hopewell Chinono. There's also growing frustration uh, over economic problems and a humanitarian crisis. Six million people here in need of food aid at the moment, and inflation is over 760%. The government may also have been rattled uh, by remarks at a virtual rally held by MDC Alliance leader Nelson Chamisa at the weekend. He spoke of radical action against the government soon. Uh, one of his deputies, Tendai Beatty, is said to have told President Menengagwa, we're coming for you. Uh, the smuggling weapons accusation by the state security minister is serious, uh, and the opposition says that, that that may now be used as a pretext to clamp down on them. Look now at some news in brief. All operations of South African Airways have been suspended as administrators try to find funding for a restructuring plan for the struggling state-owned airline. The government has to come up with more than 10 billion rand, or almost 504 million euros, for a restructuring plan for SAA, which was put into bankruptcy protection last December. It suffered almost a decade of crippling losses, which have been made worse by the pandemic. Guinea has unilaterally closed its land borders with Guinea-Bissau and Senegal. Guinea Conakry is in the midst of a turbulent election campaign, and the shutdown is reportedly a security precaution. President Alpha Conde is seeking a controversial third term in the October 18th vote. Many expatriates living in neighbouring Guinea-Bissau are of an ethnic group that's expected to vote in support of his rival, Salou Dalla Dialou. And Senegal has renamed a central square in its former capital that had borne the name Louis Fédère, a 19th century French colonial governor. The site is now Baya Nda, or Nda Square. Nda is the local name of the city of Saint-Louis, Founded in 1659, it is the oldest colonial city in West Africa. Now, rent control means that thousands of people in Cairo pay only a few euros a year for large apartments. But the arrangement comes with a sting in the tail. As landlords make little profit out of their properties, many don't see the point in upkeep and can't afford it. Often these buildings are allowed to fall into disrepair. Our correspondents report. A month ago, this building in central Cairo collapsed, injuring many. 
This is a common phenomenon in the Egyptian capital because renovations do not take place. This is in large part due to strict rent controls, according to this historian. From time to time, these buildings collapse from a lack of upkeep. You can find apartments for six pounds, so the landlords are not interested in renovating. Six Egyptian pounds converted to euros is just 20 cents. The city's rent controls date back to 1945. Saber earns three euros per month from rent on this entire building. With this income, he has little to spend on renovations. This is the first thing you see in the building. Leaks, cracks and a poorly lit staircase. A grotesque state of affairs, according to Saber. Today I collect rents of two and a half to five pounds, whereas the market value is 2,000 to 2,500 pounds. Both myself and the other landlords find that unfair and dangerous. We haven't been able to invest in 70 years. Passing by one of his tenants, a pensioner, Saber got angry. How much should it be today? We were supposed to reach the market price. That seemed fair to both of us. I'm retired. After 37 years of work, I only received 700 pounds. With Parliament currently debating whether to scrap these rent controls, tens of thousands of Egyptians could end up on the streets. One of the infrastructure projects envisaged for Cameroon 2035 is the Yaoundé Douala Highway. It will link the country's two main cities, but its completion date just keeps on changing. The project is dogged by allegations of corruption. Our team, tell us more. Excavators are digging to create a 196-kilometer roadway, the future Yaoundé Douala Highway, a controversial site. Only a third of the route has been completed. That is just 60 kilometers in six years. The project should have been delivered two years ago. Launched in 2014, the project is being managed by China First Highway Engineering. A representative of the Chinese company says lack of money caused the 48-month delay. The Chinese state bank, which finances 85% of the project, has not disbursed all the funds. Residents in some villages are particularly unhappy about the delays in compensation and have blocked construction severally. Residents in villages like Lobo. These people have lost hectares of plantations. Six years later, they are still waiting for the 2 billion CFA francs compensation promised more than 3 million euros. A budget was kept aside to compensate the villagers. 338 billion francs CFA francs, expected in 2014, 423.5 billion francs CFA in 2020, plus 25% in six years. The former Minister of Public Works, who signed the contract, criticizes the delay. Nous sommes dans un pays où la, la corruption est assez, assez, assez prononcée. Et donc, il est possible que des faux frais comme ça entrent en ligne de compte. With a kilometer at 7 billion CFA francs, nearly 11 million euros, this highway is one of the most expensive in Africa. Cameroonian authorities did not respond to our request for comment. In Algeria, the Beni Hawi district, which is about 150 kilometers west of Algiers, the capital, is a popular camping spot. It's known for its beautiful, unspoiled beaches and abundant open space which is all the more precious for nature enthusiasts looking to get away from the crowds during the pandemic. Our team tells us more. Summer vacations are almost over, and public beaches are still very crowded. Mahdi and his friends have chosen to come to this untouched beach in the region of Benihawa. 
vis-à-vis le corona, on a choisi cette plage-là parce que une plage vide, parce qu'une plage inaccessible pour la distanciation fait, euh, sociale, pour ne pas contaminer les gens, pour ne pas être contaminés. Tout ça, ça fait partie d'un choix qui a été fait pour aller voir la plage de Bnehawa et une découverte d'une nouvelle plage. This young man says that this area is a perfect alternative. Bon, on a la plage la plage sauvage. باش نحب نبراتيك سبورت تاعي اللي نحبو نحب ندير البادل هنا ما كانش بزاف غاشي ماشي كيما في لي بلاج في الجي معمرين باللي جات سكي الدراري صغار يلعبو تقدر تقيسهم تقدر تبليسيهم دونك هاد لا بلاج كيما هادي فارغه تقدر دير واش تحب محمد is a sailor from Beni Hawa district during the summer holidays he transports campers in his fishing boat to the lesser known destination انا بحري نخدم لنا صيف وشتاء خدموا لنا في الصيف يجونا الناس نجيبوهم لهنا نجيبوهم كرسات لنا يفوتوا لي جورني تاعهم كان لي كومبي هنا لي بلاج هادو ما نجموش يجيو لهم ابي ولا بطونوبيل لازم غير بالفلوكه. الجيريا has more than 1400 kilometers of coastline with breathtaking and spoiled beaches. The North African nation has a great potential and is increasingly looking to compete with neighboring countries in tourism. Well that's it for Iron Africa for now. Thanks for joining us. Do so again if you can. Take care. France 24 and DW join up at the border for the debate. Welcome. Debates, shows, special events and live coverage. Hand in hand, side by side. France 24 and Deutsche Welle regularly partner up to tackle all the European issues that matter. Two global networks dedicated to the fight for better information.